Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. As I'm sure you know by now, this video series is all about showing you how you can host an email server on a Raspberry Pi with the traffic passing through your home router using your own domain as your email address. In an earlier video series I created, I showed how you could do the same thing but, by, but for hosting a website instead, in particular a WordPress website. The reason I'm showing how to do both of these things is that particularly for a website made using WordPress, which is a content management system, having an email server is actually essential, particularly one with your own domain name that makes it a lot more professional. So having these two things combined on the same infrastructure like a Raspberry Pi is very powerful. You have your own hosting platform in its entirety on your Raspberry Pi. Up to now in this video series, we've managed to get the website running, using your domain, and an email server running, again using your domain. We've managed to show that the emails work, are sent and received. Now we need to actually set up an email client to see this happening for real. So let's get on with this video and I'll explain what we're going to do. Throughout this video series, I've been using this slide to keep track of progress. And you can see that we've ticked off most of what we need to do. This video is in between two of these points. Before we get on to looking at avoiding uh, our emails going to spam boxes, which is really the next thing to do, we do need to take a step out and look at actually using an email client to send and receive emails for us. This is because it's a lot easier than using the Telnet tool or some other command line interface to send and receive emails. Also, it's incredibly exciting when you see for the first time in a familiar environment like an email client, your emails being sent and received. So this video is all about setting up an email client. I'll be using Thunderbird just because it's completely free, it's easy to download, and for me, I already have all of the knowledge needed to configure it. I also know how you can set this up for Outlook as well, which in another video I will show you how to do. But for now we'll focus on Thunderbird. So I recommend before you go any further, you download the Thunderbird client from the internet and make sure it works on your computer so that you can basically open it and, and see that it's working. And what we'll do is we'll step through setting up Thunderbird to talk to our own email server and then we'll send and receive some emails. But before we can do that, there's one thing you do need to do first. This might look familiar. In my previous video, I asked you to open up port 25 to 25 on your router. We have to do this again, but for port 143 to 143. In video 10 of my hosting of a WordPress website video series, which I do make the assumption you have seen, I cover how I do this on my router in more detail. So if you need a refresher, please do check out video 10 in that video series where I explain how I can open up a port and do some port mapping on my home router. Now your home router will be different to mine, so you'll have to find out how to do it for yourself. But in a nutshell, what you need to do is you need to log into your router as an admin and you need to map your NAT firewall, that's N-A-T, your NAT firewall, such that external port 143 is equal to internal port 143. We do this so that our uh, SMTP server can talk to the outside world. Without doing this, our email client won't be able to talk to our Raspberry Pi. Okay, I will make the assumption that you've done that and let's head over to our desktop then where we can get started with setting up Thunderbird. Okay, here we are on my desktop. And for once, I won't be telling you to log in through an SSH terminal using your SSH alias, your Raspberry Pi. That appears to be somewhat of a tradition at the start of my videos, I've noticed. And that's not what we're going to be doing here. Instead, I'd like you to open up Thunderbird just to demonstrate that it's working. And I'll drag mine across and I'm going to make it full screen. Now, I think mine's using a dark theme. That's the first thing that might be different to yours. And how this looks is very likely different to how yours looks. So bear with me a minute. The reason mine looks like this is two things. Number one, on the left hand side over here, I've got a panel that I've minimized. And what is going to be over here for you will be a list of email accounts once you've set them up, allowing you to select multiple email accounts if you have them. 
I've got loads of email accounts over here and I didn't want to show them off to the internet. So I've kept this screen on here to the left minimized. So you might have a panel here. The second thing is I'm actually connected, well not connected, but I'm in the environment for pi at single-entity.com already because I've tested this process before I recorded the video. So you won't probably have this screen either yet. Um, but I'm showing it as it's one way you can get in to setting up a new email account. So what you can do to set up a new email account if you can get to this screen is you can click on this little button here that says set up a new account. Or if you don't have this screen and you can't find the screen, in the top right hand corner there are three horizontal lines. This is the Thunderbird menu. If you click on it and then click on the new button here, if you go down, you can see another button saying existing mail account. This and indeed what I just showed over here goes to exactly the same place. So you would click on existing mail account and it'll show you this little dialog. So before you go any further, just make sure that you can open this dialog and it looks something like this. Now Thunderbird is updated all of the time although it's not supported anymore, I don't think, but it is still updated by the community, so this might change a little bit. But I'm going to show you how to do it as Thunderbird exists to me at time of recording. It's fairly straightforward, and hopefully if Thunderbird has changed since then, you'll be able to work out the differences between how the interface looks then to how it looks now. Okay, I'm going to close that. So before we set up a new email account, we just need to make some changes to our DNS server. So I'm afraid we're not quite ready. We just need to make some changes. So I'd like you to open up your Cloudflare account. Now again, I'm assuming you've watched the WordPress video series first, where I make it very clear how to use Cloudflare. And in an earlier video of the email server video series, I also ask you to use Cloudflare briefly. So hopefully this request isn't a new one. So if you open up Cloudflare, go to your domain and then go to the DNS settings, you'll see the screen as follows. Okay, hopefully this is familiar to you. This is the bare bones DNS configuration we've been using throughout my two video series. It's about as simple as you can get really for our purposes. And here we need to add a couple of records. We're going to add an A record for the subdomain SMTP, and we're going to add the all important MX record. MX stands for Mail Exchanger, and it specifies the email server responsible for accepting email messages. So without this MX record, we won't be able to actually have our traffic externally communicate with our email server. So let's add those two records now. So if you follow along with me, I'm going to first add an A record. So click Add Record here select type A, which is the default, and in the name we're going to add SMTP, which is the subdomain. With that done, in the IPv4 address we're going to add our IP address. Yours will be different to mine of course, don't forget that, so I'm going to paste mine in here. You can leave the rest um, as they are, as default, and click Save. Okay, good. I'm not sure why mail is selected there. Okay, good. So now you have SMTP as a subdomain. So now we just need to add the all important MX record. And we're going to do this the same way. We click on add record. We select the type. We're going to go down to MX and there it is, MX. And for the name, we're going to use our domain name. So your domain name will be different to mine, but mine is single-entity.com. But here you need to type in your domain name. And then in the mail server, I need to type in, and unlike before where we've typed in the IP address, I need to type in the SMTP subdomain that I've just created. So I'm going to type in SMTP, which is the subdomain I've just created, dot single-entity.com, where of course, your domain name will be different. So that's the full address to the subdomain SMTP. And you can now see why we created the SMTP A record. Now in priority, I'm going to type in 10. 
Now the reason for typing in the number 10 in particular is because that just is the default value that appears to be used for MX records that I've seen. There's no other reason. So I've changed it to 10 and click save. So because we've set it to 10, you'll see this little priority 10 number appear. And you can now see your MX record is here with the name as your domain. So that should be your domain. And then the SMTP dot your domain. Okay, and it should be, it will be by default DNS only. Okay, so that's the DNS settings complete. So I'm going to go over and drag Thunderbird onto my main screen and maximize it. And now we're going to set up the configuration settings to connect our email client Thunderbird to our email server on our Raspberry Pi. Now, because you almost certainly will have a different view to me right now looking at Thunderbird, I'll do it the safe way and I'm going to click up here on these three horizontal bars, the Thunderbird menu. And as shown at the start of this video or towards the start of this video, you click on new, you then click on existing email account and we'll get this dialogue. So in these three boxes, we need to type in the basic configuration for our Raspberry Pi. The first name doesn't matter actually. This is just the name that will appear when you send your emails to people who receive your emails. So this could be anything. But for now, because we only have a user called Pi on our email server, I'll just call it Pi, but I'll use capitals because it's the user's name. Then in the email address, well, you know what to put here. For me, it's going to be pi at single hyphen entity.com. But for you, it's going to be pi at followed by your domain. Now the password is the password to your Pi user on your Raspberry Pi. Because as mentioned in an earlier video, the way we've set up our email server and it is one of the most common ways, is to use the accounts on the server for the email accounts. So Pi is a user on the Raspberry Pi. We set up the mail dear directory structure for that user. Therefore, Pi is a valid email user on our server. So I'm going to type in the password for the Pi user on my Raspberry Pi. This is just your Linux password. I hope that I typed that in right. I've got a slight feeling I haven't. Now you could press continue here or you could press manual configuration. Many times in my past, I've watched tutorial videos and they've just gone through the automatic process and it's worked. So I'm going to press continue to show you what happens. And then we're going to go to manual configuration to show you what it should look like. So I'm going to click on continue. So what it's doing now is it's iteratively going through all the possible settings to connect to an email server until it finds one that basically works for our email server and it will then pre-populate the configuration. So here we go. So it's found a series of settings that work to connect to our Raspberry Pi, or my Raspberry Pi in this case. And you can see it's using mail dot followed by the domain, which is correct. This is the subdomain we are using. We have set up Postfix and Dovecot to use this, so that's good. And it's using start TLS for its encryption. And the incoming and outgoing are using IMAP and SMTP. Now I cl could click done. There's two reasons why I'm not going to. The first one is because I can't, because I'm actually already in pi at single hyphen entity.com as can be seen up here, because I did it earlier. So I'm not going to click done to start it because it would tell me I can't. The second reason is I want to show you what it looks like in case you have to go through the manual configuration. So I click on manual configuration and this is what you'll be shown if you have to go through this process. So these are the three lines and how it should be set up. The incoming traffic should be IMAP. The outgoing traffic should be SMTP. The incoming traffic and outgoing traffic server name should be mail dot your domain name in both cases. The port for incoming should be 143. The port for outgoing should be 25. Now these two ports, as I mentioned in an earlier video, aren't encrypted. What makes them encrypted is the SSL type start TLS. You could choose SSL you could choose SSL slash TLS, sorry, you could choose none, but you want to choose start TLS. And this is because we haven't set up specifically encryption within our email server. We did this to keep our configuration much lighter, but you can use start TLS because we made sure start TLS was enabled, if you remember on our server, to basically create encryption on the fly. Interestingly, authentication is set to auto detect here, 
it should be normal password, I'm sure auto detect won't hurt. But if you do this manually, you want it to be set to normal password and normal password. Your username incoming and outgoing should also be pi for this user. If you had a different user here, your username would be different. Okay, so they are the configuration settings you need. So I can't do it, but you will now click done and it will go through the process of setting up your email client to connect to your Pi. So I'm going to let you do that and I'm going to see you on the other side. Apologies for the quick cut there, but I wasn't able to follow along with what you were doing. So hopefully you clicked done and it worked for you. In which case you will have this vertical bar on the left, which I've got hidden, which should show your email account and an inbox. If you click on the inbox, you should see this. And hopefully you will see the email that you sent to yourself in an earlier video. It should say my first email in my own inbox. And I think I wrote, I did, I wrote cool here. Uh, so this should be what you see as your first uh, kind of introduction to your own inbox through an email client. So well done. You can now see your own emails. So let's confirm this is working. And this is a very exciting thing to do. Let's write an email. So if I click right here, I'm going to compose a new email. Now it's appeared on my other screen, annoyingly, um, but actually that does me a favor. Uh, I'm just going to type in the details over here. So I'm going to bring it back over. So when you click on right, it'll open a new window. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from my email account to my own email account, just for fun. And I'm going to say email from Thunderbird. Hello. So it's very simple. I'm going to click send and we're going to hold our breath and hope that this email should ping up on our screen and say, you've got a new email. Here we go. OK, so I had to pause the video and wait for the email. It took a while. In fact, it didn't come through uh, as a notification, which it normally does. So I'm not editing this out of my video here because I want to show you that this might happen. Now, normally with Thunderbird, and I use it all of the time, I get a little notification down here in the bottom right hand corner that says a new email has been received. But in this case, for me, it didn't happen. So in case it doesn't happen for you, I had to click get messages to retrieve my email. As I say, normally it, it's listening all the time and I get a notification, but this time I didn't. But nonetheless, by clicking get messages, I have received the email. I've done nothing else between the two things. I've just clicked get messages and here it is. So this hopefully is very exciting for you as it is for me, particularly the first time I did this. You can see that you've sent an email from Thunderbird. It's gone to your email uh, server on your Raspberry Pi and then it's been shown in your email client again on Thunderbird through your IMAP server asking the Raspberry Pi for new emails. Uh, it's been shown here that you've got a new email. Okay, so I'm going to end the video here because this video has ended up being a bit longer than I expected with all of the setup. Uh, but we still need to have a look at the email headers. We need to check that encryption is happening and we need to send an email to another email account, one that you own, which we'll do in the next video to check that everything is working as it should in that regard. So you can send an email to another email service and also to show and demonstrate that that email will 100% end up in your spam box. So we'll reserve the last part of this for the next video. So I hope you found this video useful. As always, please do like the video and please do subscribe to my course if you haven't already. It's much easier for me to continue making videos if I see people are finding it useful. Also, I have a Patreon account. If you'd like to contribute to my work, you'll get access to videos early on one of the tiers and you'll get direct one-to-one -one support for the higher tier if you'd like it. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you found this very exciting and I will see you in the next video.